Hi, I'm Sakurai, and I'm back with another Transformers review. Today I have Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Cyberverse Commander Class Shockwave. So, first of all, let's take a quick look at the packaging. That's your standard Cyberverse Beast Hunters Prime packaging. We got Party King on the side here. We got a nice picture of Shockwave here and Hyperflux Cannon included. It better be included, it's built into his arm. He's a weapon specialist, apparently. No, he's a scientist. Right here on the side, we got his tech specs. And on the back, we have our obligatory product shots with our two sentence bio. Pause if you want to read it. Alright. <clears throat> so, back to Shockwave himself. And, you know, he's Cyberverse, of course. Not a bad figure. You know, he's got some nice metallic flake paint on his shoulders, and pretty much all the purple has a nice metallic flake to it. The head sculpt's pretty accurate, and I like. How, you know, I know they can't fit light piping into the heads a lot of times, but I like the painted eye right there. That is nice. I wish the chest was done transparent. They've done transparent pieces on a bunch of others, but due to transformation, I kind of, kind of understand why they didn't. The uh, backpack is minimalistic. It's, you know, just tank treads folded up on the back there. And yeah, he has his included Hyperflux Cannon, which is eh, impressive for its size scale. And you can fire it by just moving this part forward and it's a not a spring missile it's a simple friction missile so that's not a bad thing though friction missiles aren't bad articulation wise no head articulation no waist articulation that's due to transformation actually he's got these transformation joints on either side and you know, on this side it can move backwards and on that side it can move forward and those can actually help opposing but they're really meant more for transformation the shoulder pads are on their own separate joint, so they can move out of the way. Ball jointed shoulder, ball jointed elbow. Same thing over here, uh, no hand articulation. Hips are on a ball joint. He's got a decent knee bend, very nice knee bend. And he's got a lower knee swivel, but that is definitely for transformation. And he's got some foot articulation too, but again, that's for transformation. Go ahead and bring in my comparisons. Let's bring in Cyberverse um, Dreadwing. And as you can see, they're about the same size, you know? Same size, about the same weight. You know, this is actually a very well-priced toy. I got it at Target for right about 10 bucks, actually. So, I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to bring in my Energon 6 shots. Now... I really wish I could have gotten Shock Blast instead, but it's the only version of the mold I could get. And, yeah, there's definitely quite the size difference. So, I'm going to pause this real quick and get him transformed and then transform him, and I'll be right back. Whew, it's a good thing I paused when I did, because I almost missed a delivery from FedEx. Those uh, special figures I was hoping to get came in finally. So, back to review. So, transform Shockwave. What we're going to do... So we're going to fold the feet down like this. Going to bring the hips up and like kind of spread them out. And then twist the hinge underneath the legs, underneath the knees. And bring the knees forward like that. Alright. Then you're going to fold the backpack up and out of the way. Bring this arm around the back. Now keep in mind that the arm has to wrap around this peg right here. And then this peg on the bottom of the wrist pops in right there. Then you take the chest, bring it out, and there's a second hinge behind it, so you can fold out the chest like that and then bring it all the way over in between the legs. Spread the side panels of the chest out. Come on, there we go. Fold down the head. Then just bring this arm over in like that. And then fold those two chest panels back. Now this one won't peg all the way in because that hinge is in the way. So it does give them kind of an asymmetrical look in the end. And then bring down the back tank treads like that. And there you go. He is in his tank mode. His Cybertronian tank mode. Um, see, that's always been the biggest problem with Cybertronian vehicles. Either they're really, really imaginative or really, really stupid. So, the missile launcher still works. 
and you have a nice, you know, 360 degree swivel on that because of the ball joint in there. You can even fire almost straight up, which is cool. It doesn't really want to peg all together very well. You know, everything's still ball jointed, nothing really clips into place, it's kind of floppy. So, let's go and get the size comparison with him and Skyquake. And I did find the other weapon, for those of you who have been watching my other reviews, it's still up on the shelf right now. So, <clears throat> Shockwave does look bigger, but that's only because he's taller. You know, really, they are about the same size. Same mass and weight and all that, just Skyquake compacts down a lot better. And speaking of imaginative Cybertronian alt modes, here is six shots for that comparison. Keep in mind that that is a Voyager. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Cyberverse Shockwave is not a bad figure. It is a solid figure, but he's floppy. He's a fun toy, but he's floppy, and quite frankly, I really don't care for him. So. Like I've done in other videos, I do plan on taking them back. I do really look forward to getting the Voyager class one, though. That one I'm really looking forward to. So, it's been Talker Day with a review of Transformers Prime Beast Hunter Cyberverse Shockwave, and thank you much for watching.